Hi there, my name is Tuomas and today I thought that it would be fun to edit with you a few bird pictures that I have been taking with my bird photography pro project uh, in the backyard forest over there. And right now it's February uh, and it's very dark and very cold here in Finland once again. And these pictures have been taken with a very high ISO and I have two pictures. Uh, both are kind of a little bit different, uh, but they both have been taken in the in the in the forest and uh, Let's go just straight into it. Let's start with this one. Uh, this is I'm not using by the way uh, camera raw uh, Editing plugin thing, you know in in Adobe bridge So I'm not using Lightroom actually in this video, but Lightroom has the exact same uh, tools, so that doesn't really matter which one you use, but I usually prefer to use this one. So this is the first image that I'm going to work with over here. Uh, I'm gonna have to do a little bit more work with these than what I usually do, because the the conditions are pretty tough, we don't have a lot of light, and this is a little bit underexposed from, from, uh, from the bird itself, even though in general this, as you can see from the histogram on the right, uh, it is, you know, exposed correctly, pretty much, but I have used a very, very fast shutter speed, as you can see from here, in this particular picture, because I was trying to get sharp pictures of these little birds, because they are so fast, so uh, that's why. And I shot this wide open with the Sigma 150-600mm uh, to 600 millimeter sport lens, using the 600mm focal length. And the ISO was 5000, which, which is quite a lot for Sony a7 III. Uh, there is a lot of noise if we zoom in on the bird. As you can see, there's a lot of noise, but I don't really care uh, about the noise. That's not a problem for me. Uh, but as you can see, the image is sharp. The focus is uh, has been, you know, correctly nailed on the bird. And uh, there's a lot of detail there, so... First, actually, before going into these basic uh, tools over here, I want to crop this a little bit, and I'm probably going to lose a lot of professionals <laughs> right away at the top, because I'm uh, cropping a full-frame image uh, after the fact, but I think that's pretty good. I'm not going to... We could spend a lot of time with just, you know... <laughs> Seeing the corners, you know, the pixels over there and if, if it's all right, but I think that's pretty good. That's nice. As you can see, like, the background is very... Um, well, it's going all over the place because this is a Finnish typical forest. There's a lot of uh, spruces and during winter there's a lot of snow, so uh, it's kind of harsh background. Even if, you'd ha if I'd have a F4 lens, we'd still see all these uh, branches going all over the place and yeah, that's just the way the environment works over here. So, what we're gonna do first is we're gonna add exposure maybe maybe about that much. Uh, I'm kind of, I know I'm kind of jumping all over the place, but usually I don't really mind seeing snow in pictures. You know, if it's snowing, that's cool, but I can see that there's like a few snowflakes which are kind of bothering me. I think that's one. So I'm going to use this uh, spot removal tool to get rid of those because they kind of just overall, I think, overall, I think they uh, attached my eye in the wrong way. I think that's a lot better. Actually, there's one more that kind of looks strange to me, kind of. Usually, if there would be, you know, a lot of snow, I wouldn't, of course, Okay, now it looks even worse. If there was a lot of snow, I wouldn't be normally doing this, but since the snowing over here was quite, you know, far in view, so it doesn't really look beautiful if there is these bright spots, maybe two or three in the middle of the frame, so I like to get rid of those. So now I'm going to work with the bird, because that's the main subject over here. I want to add a little bit of exposure to it, make it a little brighter. I could use the adjustment brush tool, but I'm gonna do, because this is a pretty round shape, I'm gonna 
use the radial filter. I like this one. It's very, very easy to use. I usually mostly use this one. I'm probably going to do a few of different type of um, areas over here. This is going to be the first one. And I'm not going to add this much exposure. Maybe that's about it. And then I'm going to do another one just for the head. I'm going to add a little bit more over there, even though it's going to add the noise because the ISO level was so uh, big. I'm going to add one more over there because the uh, previous one didn't really fill up that area. Just a little bit less so that we don't get that much noise over there. And uh, I think that's a lot better if we take a look at the before and then after. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to see if the snow is actually white. And uh, I think it's pretty close. You can change the background color over here if you right click on this area. So I have it set on white now because my pictures are filled with white snow. Uh, just gonna go with my eye. I think that's that's pretty much it. Mm, that's good. Yeah, and I don't think that I'm gonna touch any of these on this picture. Mm, I'm gonna add a little bit of dehazing, a little bit of texture, just a few few digits to add a little bit of sharpness over there and then I'm gonna add a little bit of vibrance and just a few digi digits of saturation and then we can close that one I'm not gonna touch the curve right now because I really like how it looks um, then I'm gonna try and see if I can maybe reduce the noise a little bit I'm not gonna, you know, I could, of course, I could reduce every, <laughs> it completely like this, but I, I, I hate that look, so. I usually like to use it maybe from 10 to 30. 30 being like the maximum. Uh, in this case, I think 15 works pretty well. And a lot of times I like to use this shortcut, if so, at least on, oh, that's, Fire is really, really warming me. It's really cold here, so that's that's great, fantastic. I hope the crackle doesn't bother you. So, uh, anyway, what I was doing, I was uh, uh, telling you about this shortcut, short key. What what do you call this? I'm not sure really, but you know, I'm, I'm pressing Alt on on Windows at least, and uh, it turns the image as I do these adjustings, it turns it black and white, which really helps me to concentrate on, you know, what I'm actually doing and not, you know, on the colors. So I think I'm going to actually do it like this. Noise reduction 20, sharpening 35. I think that's pretty good. Uh, color mixer, uh, I think, I think everything looks really, really great and natural on this. So I'm not going to use that, at least not yet. And then I'm going to do this. This is something I like to, to do in most of my images. Mm. I like to add a little bit of... This is kind of hard without the table. I like to add a little bit of red in the shadows. And then pump it up just a notch to get that filmic look, which I really love. And then... On the highlights, I like to add a little bit of orangish color, maybe yellow, yellow or orange, to give it a little warmth. But, uh, you know, nothing too much. Have to be careful with those. And then optics. Well, we are going to do this. Use profile corrections. And we are going to look for Sigma, because that was what we used. And bam, there you go. It removes the vignetting from the corners and 
uh, all that. Whoa! Some serious crackling going, going on with the distortions from the corners as well and the image in general. Even though we might end up adding actually vignetting to the image later, I still like to use this. So, so then we actually almost finished over here. Uh, calibration. I sometimes like to punch this uh, towards the is that mag magenta or something. I'm not really sure. Uh, yeah, magenta, I think. But not too much. That's that's really important. And I like to add saturation from these primary colors after I've done everything. As you can see, if I turn the blue all the way down, the image turns very gray. Uh, but yeah, I like to use these with the saturation because I think uh, the end results are usually a lot better than if I'd just you know, do this, I think it turns into kind of ugly quite fast. So actually, I think this is it. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of noise, but I really like it. I don't want to crop it any any more than this, because I like to see the environment where the bird is. Here is now finished one, and here is before, so that's, I think, quite a difference. And this cold tit has a very, you know, black head, so, and a black eye also, so, of course, it kind of gets lost in there, but, you know, that's just the way of the bird, how it looks, so. I don't really, it, it, it would be possible, of course, to just add more exposure on the head, but I don't want to go over the top with that. I want to keep it very uh, natural. But, you know, as you can see, even even though this is exposed perfectly well uh, with the histogram, uh, it was just super dark day once again. But uh, just, you know, adding, adding a little bit of color and uh, exposure more on the shadows. I think the picture just somehow, like, you know, it just lights up and, uh, get, you know, it's just it's much more lively now, you know, with these little adjustments. Really didn't do much, as you saw, but I think the difference is quite, you know, big anyway. So, let's go to the second one. This is, the second one is a little bit different. This is kind of a little bit harder one. Uh, it's not a perfect image. As you can see, the uh, wing of this gray tit over here uh, goes behind this tree, so it clips and uh, there's blurriness in the wings, even though I used a uh, very, very uh, short shutter speed. But with these little birds, you should really have like one of a 4,000 second shutter speed. But as you can see, even with this, I shot wide open and ISO got to 12,800 already. So anyway, this is what we have. And somehow I'm going to need to make this image. Uh, you know, to look better, or at least to look decent. And this whole situation was very fast. I didn't... Whoa! Composition here is all over the place. That's something, I, I mean, I, I don't like this at all. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate this uh, aspect, aspect ratio, and this is something that I don't like to do at all. This is uh, just, you know, breaking all the rules. Uh, I hate to destroy this. Mm. Uh, you know, all these pixels that we have over here and to throw them in the trash. But uh, I already did a version of this with both of the birds on the frame. But I think I'm going to try if I can work with this because I think actually uh, that looks pretty cool as well as a, a vertical image. So once again, it is basically exposed correctly. I'm going to actually add highlights because this image, I think, has a really beautiful white tone, so I, I want to really uh, maximize that. Add a little bit of exposure. 
and let's see what this looks like from from close let's do the same with this bird add a little bit of light on the body over here not so much uh, maybe like this also there's a little bit of saturation and then I think I want to do one with the wing over here as well and of course then one with the head like so so the difference really is not it's not that huge but it adds up and I'm gonna see what I'm gonna what I can do with the uh, noise over here do, 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 do. Yeah, I can't really do much because I don't like to go over 30 so it just is what it is I guess maybe add a little bit of sharpening yeah, I mean, that's that's just what happens when you shot with high ISOs. Then let's add a little bit of vibrance, a little bit of saturation, a little bit of dehazing because it was a hazy day, and a little bit of texture to add a little bit of uh, contrast and sharpness as well. <laughs> then let's do the same over, over here, a little bit of red. Oh, this is so hard without without a table. Yeah, and a little bit of yellow over there. Then let's do the same with with this. Let's search for the sigma. Yep, that's it. Not much difference. And hmm. I could add a little bit of contrast, but then again, I really like this. Hmm. I think it's done. <laughs> As you can see, there's uh, snowflakes in this image and over here, and I don't care about these. I think they are okay. I'm not gonna remove those because there's you know quite a lot of them, so it looks natural. But if there would be just two or three, I would try to remove them, if they bothered me. But uh, I would really love this image if there was a backlight on the wings, but uh, there wasn't. There wasn't sun at all on that day. So this is after, and that's before. So, you know, nothing, nothing too much, but uh, I, I think still there's quite a big difference. This has, the original one has got a kind of a greenish tint which I rarely like I, I like much more this uh, reddish filmic look so that's it pretty minor adjustments but that's really what I try to do I don't I, I always try to fight myself for you know going way over the top and uh, going crazy because that's always possible with these things but uh, I try to keep the post-processing very minimal and uh, if this was whoa this is getting dangerous <laughs> I need to close those doors before the house burns down. If this was perfect world, we could be always shooting with backlight and uh, you know uh, fast shutter speed and very very uh, tiny ISO numbers. But we always have to work with what we get, and this was the kind of day that we had this time. And also there's the fact that these birds are very shy so uh, very shy and very fast so you always just you know get the image that you get you you, you rarely get the image that image that you want so so that's it thanks for watching i hope you got something useful information out of this or enjoyed in general i hope that we see you again on the next video take care bye bye